So far, we have seen Cauchy's integral formula, Cauchy's integral formula for derivatives and some of its consequences and we have also seen that how we can use these formulas for the evaluation of contour integrals. Now, the consequences of these uh, main results of complex valued functions uh, are kind of never ending and in this module we are going to discuss two further uh, consequences of these Cauchy's integral formulas for derivatives. Now, our first result is due to this uh, Italian mathematician Giacinto Morera and uh, the result is known as Morera's theorem. Now, uh, why we need uh, Morera's theorem? It is a kind of converse condition of uh, Cauchy's Gorsa theorem. So, Cauchy's Gorsa theorem under some conditions says that if a function is analytic, then the contour integral is equal to 0. Now, the converse is going to be equal to, so if the contour integral is 0, then the function is analytic or not. So, in short, uh, we have uh, this result that if a function uh, is uh, uh, the contour integral of a function is 0, of course, under some condition that we have simple closed contour in a simply connected domain D, then whether the function is analytic or not. Now, the partial answer of this uh, question was given by uh, Morera's theorem and uh, I am saying that it is a partial answer because uh, he imposed some further conditions on the function, so that is why it is a partial answer. Okay? Now, uh, Morera's theorem says that uh, with this extra condition that if f is continuous and in a simply connected domain D and if this contour is 0 for every closed contour C in that domain D, then the function is analytic. Okay, so, he imposed this extra condition that the function is going to be continuous. Now, the consequences of this Morera's theorems are very far reaching. So, for example, uh, we can use this uh, result to prove whether a function is analytic or not because uh, it gives a kind of a simple condition uh, for checking the uh, whether a given function is analytic or not. So, for example, using Morera's theorem, we can check a function which is given as a sum or integral of other functions is analytic or not. So, for example, Riemann zeta function uh, can be checked uh, whether it is analytic or not. Of course, uh, we can use this Morera's theorem. We can also uh, check whether uh, gamma function is analytic or not using Morera's theorem. And there are many other consequences of Morera's theorem as well. Now, uh, we are not going to uh, have a look at the proof of uh, Morera's theorem, but it is a, a relatively simple proof and it is available in the Churchill or Matthews book. Okay? Now, uh, as you can see that uh, we are going to use a consequence of uh, Cauchy's integral formula for derivatives and the consequence is the following. If function f is analytic, then its derivatives are going to be analytic. So, this is one consequence that we have discussed in our previous module and we are going to use, we, we use this consequence in the proof of Morera's theorem. Now, uh, moving on to the uh, second and last consequence uh, in this module of uh, Cauchy's integral formula for derivatives, this is the Gauss's mean value theorem. Now, as the name suggests that it has something to do with finding the mean value of a function and uh, what does this uh, uh, result says or what does this result provide us? So, it provides us uh, the following fact that if we want to calculate the mean value of a function, but not just at any points, uh, the functional values at uh, the boundary of a circle. So, basically uh, on the points of a circle, if you take complex numbers at, uh, uh, at a circle and if you want to calculate the mean value of the functional values on that uh, uh, points on the circle, then it is going to be provided by this theorem. So, the theorem says that f of z naught, uh, the functional value at the center of the circle is basically the mean value. Okay? So, somehow this is equal to the mean value of the functional values on this uh, uh, circle. So, uh, given a circle with center z naught, c or z naught and r is capital R is basically uh, the radius, then this result says that the functional value at the center that is f of z naught is basically the mean value of this function. Now, uh, let us see how to prove this uh, uh, result. First of all, we are going to uh, need the parametric representation of the circle with center z naught and radius capital R and uh, 
of course this is going to be equal to z naught plus r e raised to power iota t and t varies from 0 to 2 pi and it is positively oriented circle now uh, since f of z is analytic in d so we can apply this uh, cauchy's integral formula that f of z naught is equal to 1 over 2 pi iota multiplied by this contour integral along this circle c r and f of z over z minus z naught and of course this should be dz over here okay now we also know that there is a way for evaluating uh, contour integrals and it is equal to f of uh, z of t multiplied by z prime of t and uh, so this is our integrand so this is uh, let's say g so g, this is g of uh, z of t so z of t is z naught plus r e raised to power iota t so f of uh, z become f of z naught plus r e raised to power iota t and z minus z naught becomes so z naught plus r e raised to power iota t minus z naught and uh, this expression is basically z prime so z prime of t is basically iota r multiplied by e raised to power iota t so that's what it is written here iota r e raised to power iota t so this is z prime of t in this case and that's how we evaluate uh, contour integrals and the limits are basically the variation of this parameter t so which is 0 to 2 pi okay so that's uh, the first definition of contour integral that we uh, that we have seen uh, in this course and we are applying uh, this definition of contour integral over here now simplifying this thing so z naught will be cancelled out with z naught and this r e raised to power iota t in the second stage will be cancelling uh, this r e raised to power iota t and uh, this iota and this iota will be cancelled out with this iota and uh, so what we are left with is uh, 1 over 2 pi and uh, 0 to 2 pi f of z naught plus r e raised to power iota t dt and uh, what do we get at the end so f of z naught is basically equal to this expression and hence it says that if you want to calculate the mean value of uh, this function uh, at uh, this circle then it is going to be equal to the functional value at the center of the circle now let's see how we can simplify some of our contour integrals or some of our integrals using this gauss's mean value theorem now if you want to evaluate the following integral and uh, you can observe that the integrand has the form that some function which is in this case is exponential function uh, is evaluated or we are taking the composition of this with this parametric representation of a circle of radius 5 and center pi iota okay so if we have this form then uh, we can use this uh, gauss's mean value theorem and uh, let's see how we can use it so first of all uh, the function should be analytic and in this case the function is this exponential function and which is analytic and uh, we are taking or applying or taking the composition of this exponential function with this parametric representation of a circle of radius 5 and center pi iota okay now uh, using this gauss's mean value theorem uh, we get this uh, integral to be equal to 2 pi which is coming from the formula of gauss's mean value theorem multiplied by f of z naught so in this case z naught is pi iota and the function is e raised to power z and so we have exponential of iota pi and we can easily evaluate that this e raised to power iota pi using Euler's identity is equal to sorry using Euler's formula is equal to cosine pi plus iota sine pi which is equal to minus 1 so we have minus 2 pi so that's how we can uh, simplify some of our integrals using Gauss's mean value theorem now in this module we have seen two further consequences of Cauchy's integral formula so namely Morera's theorem and Gauss's mean value theorem.